Hello, it is YFFR on air with me, Rudy. And me, Eric. <laughs> Can anyone guess? I'm not going to say what it's from, what I just did. I just want to know who else has a toddler and will know what I just referenced. I think you just referenced Sesame Street. Honey, you can't say that. Oh, I can't. Well, you already asked the question. But if you haven't watched Sesame Street in a long time, go to YouTube and look up uh, I was going to make... It's not Gonger. I was going to make this a contest, Eric. I was going to make it a contest. It is not Gonger. I love Gonger. Rudy is Abby's little brother. That's, and, no, I don't... I, I like Gonger. I mean, Rudy... And, <laughs> Rudy can go away. And it's on Abby's Amazing Adventures. It's, it says, Abby's Amazing Adventures. And it says, with me, Rudy. Anyway, Gonger, if you have not... Way better character. Okay, look up... This is what I want you guys to do. Yeah, look up Gonger. Look up Monster Food Truck, okay? You will not be disappointed. <laughs> Maybe the contest could be for people to send in their favorite gonger clip gonger quotes yes because <laughs> gonger is hilarious like he's the he's definitely the character that keeps the parents entertained at least through that i was one gonna segment. say whoever is the puppet master behind gonger is having a hell of a time he's like he's always kind of like insulting cookie monster a little bit but like really likes him He's like, ah, like I imagine if this were like not Sesame Street, like this were like an adult version, he'd be like, God you mean like damn it, Ave Cookie Monster. <laughs> you mean like Avenue Q. Like Avenue Q. Like, Cookie Monster, you're silly son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so it's late, as you can tell. And if you can't already tell, Eric and I both have cold, speaking of said toddler. I sound amazing and nasally eric sounds like a radio show host yeah i mean i gotta figure out how to keep this around i think part of it's just embracing that sound like i'm going with it well see i don't know this really okay eric he can be so sick okay yet he looks fine and great in fact and his hair is done and he sounds like a radio show host when i'm sick i look like i haven't slept or showered in days i'm like pale my hair's and i'm and this is me trying to like put it together and i just have like a head cold i don't even know it just pisses me off eric that you can just like roll out of bed perfect and i have to put in a lot of effort <laughs> listen i put in the effort there's a the hair product in there's two hair products in the voice is manicured at this point <sighs> Well, good for you. Um, but I will say that even though we're sick, we had such a great time talking to Peggy Cash tonight. And Peggy Cash is um, the granddaughter of Johnny Cash. So it's really going to be a really cool conversation. I'm just Speaking kidding. Which, she is not I could probably <laughs> roll a sweet Johnny Cash song right now. You could. Yeah. yeah. Some Folsom City. Yeah. What is it called? Totally. Folsom, the Folsom City. Prison. Folsom Prison. That's right. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, she I, I said she was the daughter of Johnny Cash, so people would definitely stick around and listen. But she is just as fascinating because she is um one of our first trainees for um instructor school bridge course, our online instructor school. And if anyone is like, you know, kind of flirting with us at YFFR, wondering if they want to do it. I think this is a great insider's look at what to expect. Um, she will tell you the truth about all of it. I don't want to spoil any of what she has to say. So she is an Army Reserve veteran. She is the uh, spouse of a law enforcement uh, officer. I'm not sure what his rank is, but uh, law enforcement. And um, yeah, so she's going to answer a lot of your questions by talking through her experience. So please enjoy Peggy Cash. Welcome to Yoga for First Responders On oh, Air, wow. where we break down yoga, neuroscience, resilience, and public safety in a manner that's authentic, educational, and most importantly, entertaining and lighthearted. I'm YFFR's founder, Olivia Mead. 
As a yoga instructor and neuroscience enthusiast, I'm passionate about supporting first responders and anyone looking to improve their overall human performance. Each week, we'll dive into a new topic and often bring on expert guests to share their insights and experiences, but we'll also keep it real and share our own stories and struggles along the way. So whether you're a first responder or seeking to master the science of mental and physical resilience, this podcast is your ultimate guide to triumph over life's challenges with unbreakable strength and unwavering fortitude. By pressing play, your training has begun. Awesome. (laughs) I have a funny story about recording. So I've been doing this new thing. And by the way, Peggy, we just, we'll, we'll just start talking. We're already recording. So, you know, (laughs) whenever we decide that's the beginning, you know, so here's my funny story. I have been doing this new thing to try, you know, our whole theme in YFFR in the last couple of years is efficiency, get things done smarter. Let's, you know, roll forward. Let's not suck time out of our short little lives that we have, you know, Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this thing that instead of calling people for a meeting and let's all get a meeting together, ironically, because I did just actually call on two (laughs) meetings, but um, I have been recording myself and what I want to tell people, okay? Mm -hmm. And this software I have turns it into an agenda. So I've been giving people an agenda and a recording of me that's like seven minutes long and then they get to comment and whatever. And if we do have to have a meeting... They already know what I need to say and this or that. They already have their comments ready. And the meeting like can be 15 minutes. You know, it's so Mm. efficient, right? Because what I noticed is when I called people together for a meeting, they were just sitting there listening to me. And then is everyone good with this? Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they, we need to be there, right? Okay. So we have a meeting scheduled with one of the chiefs of the National Park Service, like federal mm-hmm. agency, right? And I'm mm-hmm. pitching something to him. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this for that. I am going to get him all ready and prepped. And it worked. He, yeah. you know, wrote back stuff and said, here are things that are going to be hurdles, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we had a really good meeting with him. But after I recorded it, and I sent him the recording, I realized I had a basket of laundry (laughs) right here the whole time. And I was like, hello. And there's just a basket of laundry. So I think, you know, I know him pretty well. It was not a big deal, but I was like, it's just funny that you like do this whole thing. And then, you know, when we're in our homes or some personal, like my kid's diaper could be there. Sometimes I have my poodle in here and he's a, you know, anyway. So, uh, (laughs) Yeah, but I think we're all cool with it nowadays. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. My my dog is in here. He 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 tends to want to hang with me when the door is shut. And yeah. you know, like, okay, we have to go make a call, you know. And he's usually pretty good, but you know, we he, welcome might, dogs. he might see him. That's <laughs> he fine. We him. we interview the therapy dogs all the time. Yeah, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, in nice. fact, one of my the episode that's going to be launching. July 4th. So those that are listening to this one, the episode that launched back on July 4th uh, was somebody that came to our Manchester, New Hampshire instructor school. And that was like the instructor school of dogs. Like they were like, and the one I did go to dogs, there were as many yes. dogs. as there were yeah, students. Right. I mean, it was insane. Like, because we have several handlers and whatnot. And so, uh, yeah, Olivia was heartbroken that she did not go to Manchester yeah. instructor school with all the dogs. Yeah, that would have been awesome. There I were agree. a couple dogs in DC and I really hung out with them quite. I got to take one potty. Nice. <laughs> it was like How which was the best. <laughs> yeah. So, um okay, so Peggy, I have called you here today <laughs> because <laughs> um but honestly like okay, so for for those who are tuning in, Peggy is one of our trainees for Instructor School Bridge course, our very first cohort. And I thought she'd be, as we're kind of wrapping up with all the trainees, you know, they're all going at different times, but they're all kind of headed towards the finish line. If not, they're already, some have certified already. Um, and we're, we're reflecting Including on Including Peggy, are you certified? 
Did not you? yet. Not yet. But I'm close. Yeah, not yet. Okay. I mean, I'm getting there. I'm like, All I have right. to do the essay and a couple of final, final steps, but I'm getting there. That's awesome. <laughs> She's forging ahead though. You know, I see it. I see it in the background. And so as a team, we're reflecting, we're like, okay, where can we do this and that and tighten things up? What worked great um, for the cohorts in the future? <clears throat> So we did an episode where sort of us on the backside of this was like, what did we see? What do we need to tighten up? What do we need to change? And now we're going to be talking to people on the other side. So we're going to be talking to you going through the training. We're also going to be talking to a chief who is implementing YFFR in his department with an instructor trained through ISBC. So we're going to talk to him on his, on his view. So um, the reason I, you know, you stuck out to me was the post you've been making in the hub and the work you've been doing, you're in it and you're, you're doing it, you know, and you're doing it the way I hope someone would do it with their full okay. heart and their full commitment. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know, I thought you were the, you'd be the perfect person to kind of give our audience the, the you know, the experience that you're having. So mm -hmm. first tell us how you got to, how you knew ISBC was a thing. I do. Um, I had, uh, you know, I, I think you have seen, or certainly in my application, I'm a law enforcement family, right? My husband's a sergeant. Um, I have many relatives, you know, who, who are in law enforcement. We're, I'm part of that community. And once we were invited to a seminar all around resiliency, right? We all we hear that over and over. It's been a buzzword for some time, but it was actually extended to family members. And that was the first time family had been invited to something like this. So we went, you know, everybody went and um, the speaker at the time was talking about some of those statistics that, you know, I, I now know, but some of those were the first time I had heard those statistics, like, you know, the critical incidents that uh, first responders have that for most of us, we only have one or two, you know, hopefully in a lifetime and they experience hundreds of them. And, and some of those things like really struck home. I certainly seen it. Um, mm -hmm. I certainly know it, you know, but the, you know, hearing about it and the impact on the body and, and all, uh, you know, everything that everyone has to do to combat that, um, really hit home. Right. And one of the things that, um, it was Dan, that he was a speaker. One of the things that he had mentioned was yoga. Well, I have, I've practiced yoga for years, you know, just on my own, just be practicing, going to classes wherever and however I can. And, um, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, yoga, of course, my heart, my, my ears all, you know, per perked up. I'm like, of course, it's yoga. That was the perfect thing. Um, I'm like, I wonder if that's something that I can share my experiences with yoga with some of my family and friends and how I can give back. Um, I actually was not a yoga teacher at the time. Um, so I went from there and got my 200 hour uh, with the intent of sharing this with first responders, but going through the 200 hours um, wow. was, uh, it, you know, it, can you hear me? Yeah. You oh, said, I wow. thought you said, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, said, wow. oh, oh wow. no. the fact that like you were yeah, so sorry, motivated yeah. after hearing that talk that you're like, I'm going to go yeah. get my 200 hours so I can yeah. bring this back to my law enforcement family. Like that's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. And, and, but even then, yeah. So even then that, you know, that that's where I had wanted to go. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's something I can do. I could share it with them, but going through it, um, you know, we all have different experiences with our um, 200 hour teacher training, the yoga training, because it's, it's not regulated. <laughs> There's, you know, not well it's, anyway. not, it's all over the place. Right. When I ended up at a studio that was very, very grounded, I, you know, don't get me wrong, but it, it, I, it's, you touch on subjects, right? You kind of like touch on it and it's very much uh, centered around forms and stuff, but not really, even though it's teacher training, you're not really teaching. And I couldn't quite figure out like, how am I going to, how would I teach this to my first respect to my husband? You know, I have right. one here, right? You had to practice on. And it was like, you know, some of the words that you use, the Sanskrit and, and all of that, the, you know, gaze over your shoulder, you know, just like that soft, you know, some of those, anyone that's been to a yoga class knows what I'm talking about, right? There's just some of that there. And um, 
I, I couldn't quite do it. So I Googled, you know, yoga for first responders. And that's how I found you. So long story there. So, I'm sorry, Olivia. Long story short, that's that was how I found uh, yoga for first responders. No, that's perfect. I mean, that's exactly what what I wanted. And yeah, it's interesting, you know, your experience with the 200 hour. And again, I'm not here to shit on 200 hour programs because there are great ones out there. Um, but this, when I've, I've seen a lot of 200 hour trained yoga teachers, and I would say a vast majority of them do not feel prepared to teach. And if they, you know, are teaching or feel like they can teach, I don't think that they actually know the depth of what they could be teaching, you know, with yeah. this, with this tool of yoga. And so mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people actually tell us that our instructor school, our in-person one at least, um, was more valuable than their 200 hour training. And yeah. I think the reason they're saying that is because I always joke that like, I build things out of spite, <laughs> like I'm mad at something, so I'm going to do it better. Right. So that's mm -hmm. <laughs> So like when I built instructor school, not only was it to teach yoga to first responders specifically, but I was sick of people not getting the tools they needed to actually teach, you know, like yeah. I remember my own 200 hour training. Now I was an actress and stuff. I was used to standing up in front of people mm -hmm. still wanting to shit my pants the first time I, not even the mm -hmm. first time, the 10th time, the 20th time, like it's you know, yeah. it's definitely difficult to stand up there and teach. And a lot of people never feel comfortable, no matter how many hours of training that they have, you know, yeah. and that's because they're not getting trained in the nuts and bolts of literally how to teach, not how to teach in general, how to teach this work and the why behind it. Anyone yeah. could just, you know, spit out names of postures and the thing about Sanskrit, whoever, you know, whoever's listening to this too, don't get me wrong. Sanskrit is part of the curricula of yoga. It is a staple of yoga. And I love Sanskrit and I made sure to really learn everything and try to teach so much of my classes in it. But when you think of the benefit versus risk in terms of this population, there is more risk to using Sanskrit than to the benefit of it. And I describe this as like, Teaching yoga to a cop is like getting a squirrel to eat out of your hands. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't make any sudden movements, you know? Yeah. So don't be using Sanskrit. Don't be using too much explanation to say, look over your shoulder, like mm -hmm. you said, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, so we're, we're not only getting to the simplicity to teach it to this population, but the simplicity and structure of teaching this in general. So that's, a, yes. that's another yeah. layer that was really important to me with instructor school. So I'm, yeah. you know, so and you're just another example of folks, you know, feeling that way about their 200 hour. So, yeah. Th yeah. So this leads me into a question and I might be jumping the gun way down the road. Cause that's usually what I do, but you're wrapping up instructor school bridge course, which we built this for folks that had their 200 hour certification, assuming that they had some teaching experience under their belt. And you come in and just say like, I wasn't super comfortable coming in with my 200 hour to teach. So yeah. as you're wrapping this up, how are you feeling? Oh, about much better. Okay. Yeah. Much, I feel much more comfortable, uh, confident in being able to carry on a class. Um, not worrying, you know, that I'm talking not in Sanskrit so much, but just in general, like chakras. I mean, <laughs> you know, like they, you, all of that, that typically goes into a yoga class when you're trying to talk about the why now I have the tools. I know the why I know that it's breath and I know what the breath does for, you know, yes. quarter swords. It, it, it just, um, it, it really brought it all home. And the 200 hour was certainly, I think, valuable to have under your belt first, not just um, like for teaching. I know there's several of, of my classmates that here, um, would you call, call us cohorts? They, several of <laughs> us that um, are in this you know, first class seem to have a lot of experience teaching already, right? I don't. I, I don't have a lot of experience in teaching only because of my comfort level and who I wanted to teach. I was like, this, this isn't going to work. I don't know how to, how to approach them. I don't know how, how to build a class. I could sequence a class, but that 
I could do the, all that stuff, but I did not know how to approach the audience. So I, I think that um, this class that I'm so glad I picked it. I told you I Googled it and I was looking at the, you know, the website. You certainly have a lot of information that's out there on the website, but I was a little like, I wasn't sure, right? I was like, is it cheesy? Is it, I couldn't tell like the approach. I'm like, is this right? So I actually went through the list and I found, um, some local instructors and I reached out to a couple and um, I'm like, you know, is this for real? <laughs> is this, is this, cause we all have, I mean, if you're in the community, it, you know, we have that, that bullshit radar, right? It's like, is this, is this right? Is this for real? Is this well received? I wanted to make sure it was well received and the credentials were phenomenal, but um, the teachers that I had reached out to locally definitely um, made me feel much more comfortable with it. And then, yes, Eric, after going yeah. through all of the training, I'm excited to be able to offer this. Yeah. So the you know, cause you're in the greater Chicagoland area just yes. happened to be on the the Indiana side of the border. So I'm curious yep. which instructors you reach out to because we have some strong ones in that area. Cheryl. You to Cheryl, Do you know by Cheryl? Chance? yeah. Of yes. course, of course, yes. Cheryl's an OG, all of Chicago Police Department, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She lives not too far. I'm like, I see her now because we, you know, we we've talked and she's so gracious and so kind to be, you know, willing to share her experience and why she went into this. Um and she actually teaches um, at one of the MTUs in Illinois that my husband teaches at, right? Mm -hmm. so, oh, great. So, yeah. I mean, I had, you know, so um, I know she does that like eight hours. She does all kinds of stuff, I know. But yeah, she was yeah, so um, the instructor the, that I talked to. So the MTU stands for Mobile Training Unit. And we have an eight-hour curriculum that Cheryl teaches for them. And it's yeah. accredited in the state of Illinois. Yes. Um. So, yeah, so that's what she does with them. And yeah, no, she's great. She's an OG. Um, and so here's the difference. So instructor school bridge course and then instructor school, which is in person. So if anyone's listening, the big difference between the two for the online bridge course, you have to have a 200 hour certification to take the course in person. You don't need any yoga experience at all. So we have firefighters, cops with no yoga experience standing next to a veteran yoga instructor who, like you said, maybe has the tools to instruct yoga, but doesn't know how to approach this specific population. Yeah. The, oh my God, there's a fantastic rainbow outside the window right now. I got to take a <laughs> nice. picture of it, you guys, for our, <laughs> oh my goodness, so pretty. Like it's perfect. Oh, it's nice. perfect, you guys. Anywho. <laughs> so I, I don't know, it means something. So it does. <laughs> <laughs> what so what we took out the what's specific with the in person one is the amount of practice teaching workshops we do we mm. do tons of practice teaching on day 1 before lunch they're practice teaching yeah people wow. who have never even taken a yoga class until that point they've taken their first yoga class their first practice teaching workshop and then they're practice teaching before lunch on day 1 and wow. we just keep push in the practice teaching over and over. You said to see by the end of the last day, how comfortable folks are with, I mean, you see this stereotypical cop walking around teaching a good yoga class. I mean, nice. I'm just like proud of our organization for, you know, doing that. We really, you know, nailed, I think, getting people comfortable on their feet and the way we approach it. You so when I was be, yeah. very concerned with putting this online, we've been asked to put instructor school online for years. A, it's a massive project. Yeah. B, I was like, I have to be there. I have to put my hands on them. I can't, I can't let them out in the world without like <laughs> being face to face, eye to eye with them. And then we realized, okay, what is the biggest thing of being in person? And that is learning the actual yoga and mm -hmm. teaching the actual yoga. Okay. So who should already know how to do that? 200 hour trained teachers. So that's okay. what we took out. I left a few things, a couple practice teaching in there um, mm -hmm. so that we could get, you know, because the biggest hurdle, Peggy, that we have with yoga teachers in person and we're noticing online too, is you have to unlearn a few things. 
things that you thought were quote unquote right. And I'm not Mm -hmm. saying they're wrong. I'm just saying we got to change it for this population. We got, you have to have another um, approach in your tool belt. Right. So when we have the experienced yoga teacher come, they have a harder time than the cop who's never done yoga before because all they know is what we're teaching them. So they stand up and they teach what they've learned that week. The yoga teacher has X amount of years Mm -hmm. of saying like, let your belly button bloom as it goes (laughs) up to break that habit. And when an experienced yoga teacher, you think cops have egos? (laughs) yeah like oh I know you know know. American yoga teachers holy shit so when you tell a yoga when you get a yoga teacher who feels very competent and you get them to a place where they're back feeling scared again like they did right out of teacher training you've got someone's survival ego popping up and that's a whole other layer that um you know that we have to deal with so we got a whole bunch of that in ISBC. What I mean by that is yoga teachers, right? Yeah, so we're inviting yeah. all of that in. We, you know, there are a couple people who maybe have gotten their 200 hour, but haven't clocked a lot of experience yet. But we've gotten, you probably saw this on the trainee hub of, you know, um, we actually had someone quit the entire training because of the coaching to not demo the yoga while they were teaching. Oh, see, no, I loved that. <laughs> um, but I get it because it it was probably just so ingrained in that person, right? right? That that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be up there showing it, you know, on the mat. But um, I, I, I like that part because I'm more comfortable walking around than yeah. being up front and center, sure. you know, just my own personal, right. like I'm more comfortable that doing that, but um instead of demonstrating, but then, you, you know, I have more control of my breath when you're doing all of the, the moves with the person too. You can't project your voice. You can't, you well, know, you can't see them. Class. They can't see you yes. you're their coach. You're their coach. Yes. Like Eric Front says, row. the co- yeah. the football coach isn't out running plays. He's yeah. watching the people run plays so he can coach them, you know? Good. Yeah. Good example. Yeah. So like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and also, you know, once, and this is the structure of our regular instructor school in person too, is we started off very, very structured, just do this. Mm -hmm. And then as the week goes on, you can start to get flexible with that and bring in your own voice, but you can't start loosey goosey, you know, Mm -hmm. you have to start discipline and then you can have some breathing room. So when I say don't demo while you teach, it's first what I say, absolutely not nothing. It's because I want someone to break that habit completely, focus on their verbal cueing. Now, if you watch a video of me teaching, while they're doing a lunge twist, if this is their first lunge twist, I'll be looking at them and doing it like this and saying, see, yeah, remember that? Okay, then I'll get Mm -hmm. up and go. And so I'm doing this kind of mixture of whatever's needed in the moment. And that's totally Mm -hmm. allowed. But we have to start with, hey, have enough self-discipline to be willing to take yourself out of your habit and try yeah. something new. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah speaking I, of habit, that was good. Mm-hmm. The, uh, one of the first weeks at instructor school bridge course, we have you do a sun salutation and record it like <laughs> very strict sun salutation, just because we don't even realize some of the habits that we put into <clears throat> ourselves that we've done gotten over years of yeah. doing yoga. And so how did that feel? Like, what did you, what, what, what was, did you, find? Was, did you have a habit? Did we pick up yeah. on something? What, what was that? What was Some that cells like? are funny, right? That That's a funny topic anyway, right? Because you're trying to, you know, there's the 15, you know, step version of it that's in our manual. Well, all of us probably have a 17 step or a 20 step or whatever, even for Sun A, it seems like there's, you know, there's different variations. So that we kind of had to relearn it, right? Because I kept doing a half lift. And I think even in my, the last one I recorded, I know I goofed that up. But, but yes, the um, things that you do, I don't know, it's like, we're very fancy with our arms (laughs) up. And we're very fancy with our thing, you know, it's like this extra little, I don't know if you can see, it's this little extra, you know, that we do. And, 
it's not needed. I loved it. You know, I was like, yeah. you're right. That it's not needed. <laughs> you know, why do we do that? Because yeah. my teacher did that. I don't right, know. Exactly. It's, it's, that's the thing you don't know. Here's, mm-hmm. here's the point too. I'm not against a hand flip for the sake of the hand. Like I'm not against 16 step. I'm not against doing an extra halfway lift. I don't give a shit. Do three in a row. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The point is what you just said. I don't know why I'm doing it. Yeah. Most people don't know why they're doing it. So know why, back it mm-hmm. up, justify it, and then you can do it all you want. You know, yeah. like, in fact, when I'm when we're in a warm up and I'm doing a half sun sal or full sun sal, I actually will have everyone do it three times, three times arms, three times outside 90, three times mm-hmm. halfway left because they're literally warming up their joints. Yeah. So there's so many different variations and none of them in my mind are quote unquote wrong. If the alignment's there, you're right. That's not the point. The point is here's 15 steps. Can you do it without (laughs) adding in shit you don't even know you're doing? Yes. So know why you're doing everything. And some, you know, here's another thing because there are variations in everything in a previous manual, I would put, sometimes I'd add an extra down dog in there. So right now we go from a forward fold to a high plank yeah. and then we do the plank drill. Sometimes I walk them back to down dog, then the plank drill, right? Mm-hmm. Just how I feel that day, whatever. So I put in the different steps of the sun sal, um, abbreviation option for a down dog here. And then at the end, I said, option for another halfway lift, right? I was trying to show there are options. That confused so many people, especially folks who are do not have previous yoga training. Yeah. They're like, just tell me what to do. Do you want me to do the extra down dog or yeah. not? You know, so <laughs> yeah. that's why I decided to take out all these options. Yeah. They just do this. And then by the end of the week, we're like, listen, if you feel, if you're teaching recruits and they've been, you know, but assholes that day, make them do three plank drills in a row during the yeah. sun tell. <laughs> the, yeah. the why and the result of this pro- protocol, this training, this yoga is not the 15 steps of the sun cell. It's yeah. the why behind it, you yeah. know? So do whatever you need to do to get to that result. So, yeah. you know, I, I want to make that clear for anyone who's listening or maybe considering this and be like, oh, it's that rigid. It's mm-hmm. not Bikram where there's this, you know, these 26 steps and you have to do that or, you know, I'll punish you. It's not that. We're yeah. giving this general structure so you don't have to worry about the structure and you can actually get to work on the essence of how they're doing it. What is their breath doing? What's their mind doing? Take the fancy choreography out of it and just do the yoga. You could do a sun salutation once every day. Like that's your yoga practice for the rest of your life and barely scratch the surface of what yoga has to teach you. Just because you're doing handstands and headstands and whatever does not mean you know the essence of yoga at all. So I just want to make that clear if anyone's worried about how stringent we are. No, I thought, and I thought we covered that well in the, um, you know, we had a couple of zoom calls, right? So it was online. We, we worked at our own pace, but you're, you're trying to kind of do each mod module or week, you know, um, somewhat at the same time. So that when you're discussing things on the hub and you have the same questions and, um, and some of those kind of questions came up and I think it was because they're they're all already yoga teachers and they're, well, why do we call it this here? And why do we not call it that? Well, I also thought, well, we're all yoga teachers. We, um, we know there's variations. We know there's different ways to approach it depending on who's doing that. But I thought we had good discussion on that in the hub and good explanation on that. So we definitely weren't left thinking, you know, it's got to be this way or else, you know, the yoga police are going to come after us. But (laughs) it was, um, we, I think, I thought we had good discussion and good opportunity to talk it through, even though we were online and not together. Yeah, and so that's kind of another benefit of this uh, instructor school bridge course is that it is a hybrid course technically and that you are doing a lot of the work independently online working way through mm-hmm. but there's a lot of touch point from YFR staff on the back end between zoom yes. calls throughout 
uh, your squad leader or cyber squad leader, uh, providing feedback, answering questions as you go along, talking on that training hub. Like there's a lot of interaction with the wife of our folks because we've all taken online courses at this point. Most of them are watch the video, click the answer, try to go through it as fast as you can. Full disclosure, yeah. that's how I did my 200 hour training uh, during mm -hmm. COVID when you yeah. can start to take them online. I was like, yeah, absolutely. I've, I, I learned my yoga teacher training through YFFR, but mm -hmm. I didn't have, wasn't carrying a 200 hour cert. So I was like, okay, well, shoot, here's my opportunity to bust through one as fast as I can. Yeah. And I did. This training though, we've heard is very different from the amount of information you're taking in, number one. And then number yeah. two, the amount of feedback and touch points that the YFR team gives back to you folks that are going through it. So yeah, yeah I, if you just kind of want to share some thoughts on that a little bit, maybe. Yeah, I think it was maybe, I don't know, after week three or so, we all got hit with squad leaders, right? Because we didn't have them initially. I'm like, oh my God, what is that? Squad leaders, you know, and um but we all got hit with squallies, but they were phenomenal. We all, you know, we were broken into little teams and that was, I think, more to help manage some of the questions or some of the comfort. So we weren't all singly going to one person. And I thought that was a smart ad. Um, I felt very comfortable with my squad leader. And then when she, you know, I had, I, I think I had two, I had Trina and, um, but she went on vacation right recently. So then Lisa kind of stepped in to cover, but I mean, instant responses within 24 hours. If there's any question, like when we're doing a test or having, you know, some technical glitches as you do, especially for an inaugural kind of thing, you know, that everybody was so quick to respond. I, I thought we had full support. Well, that's yeah. great to hear because we wanted you to feel that way. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we, the, the first, like you said, the inaugural um, course, we didn't know what we didn't know. We didn't know what we're going to be hiccups. You know, we actually had to change platforms because yes. the first platform yeah. wasn't working the way we wanted yeah. it to. And we're like, oh my God. Right. And everyone's been so gracious. And you're absolutely right. Like there were a lot of questions coming in, great questions, and also mm -hmm. a lot of grading that kind of needed some more support than I thought. And so these folks are squad leaders who come to in-person training. We have small groups and in-person training and they're their lead, right? Mm -hmm. So we mimicked it um, online. We mim mimicked ah, okay. for, for ISBC. So they're all squad leaders in, in real life as well. So that's great to hear. And, you know, I've taken online courses too. Same thing. I'm like half yeah. watching TV, half clicking, you know, on like a real estate course or, or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. It. Um, yeah. But yeah, we we really wanted to do it differently. We wanted to make sure everyone had the support because we're not only certifying you, we're licensing you mm -hmm. to use our name, our curriculum. It's a, it's our reputation is on the line. So yeah. I, I, you know, I told you in the beginning of this conversation that I'm all about efficiency now and getting things automated and streamlined so we can scale and do more. And we're doing that a lot. Most of our courses are, you know, completely automated, you do them on your own and, yeah. and et cetera. But I am not going to budge on this with ISBC that we have human to human contact and support yeah. because going through this course does not guarantee certification or licensing, you know? Yes. And so I'm going to stay Oh, you're waving your hands. Yeah. You get the balloons. Yeah, when you oh, the, every, yes. everyone like, is familiar was, with this, is, but it doesn't happen yeah. at the things that make sense. I did not yeah. give a I thumbs mean, up. And like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's like if I they mean, clap, see, nothing I was, happens. I was celebrating the fact that you said that going through the course does not equal licensing or certification. Like that's a big thing. Like, it's because so many courses are just on automatic, like click, 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 pass. Here's your certificate. Go on. You, you know there. what? Yeah. And that meant a lot too. I think that was like the, our first uh, module or week, I, I don't know what we're calling them, week one or module one, but you, the very beginning, we talked about um, this being a non for profit and what that meant. Uh, we talked about um, the protocol, the licensing, some of the ground rules, right, that we all need to do and agree to. And I think that meant a lot to me. I was starting to feel like, even at that point, like a little more like, oh my gosh, I'm really going to be part of something here. This is, you know, and then when you see all across the country, and then we even have students in that hub who are not. Oh yeah, we States, have um, Israel, right? yeah. we have uh, Amsterdam. I was like, I was Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. 
it's like, wow, this is really, you know, part of something. And um, so, so I'm very proud to be going through this. I think oh, it's um, I, a great curriculum. You just made my night because that's exactly, like, I literally have chills because that's exactly what I hope. I want everyone to feel accomplished, know that this is an exclusive instructor network and you have to meet milestones to be able to be part of it because that's how high we hold our standard of instructor because that's how much we hold how high we hold our curriculum and our approach and we think very highly of it and we want to make sure it is um here for the long haul and that yeah. that's going to be on the shoulders of our of our instructors we know we have hundreds across the country and now the world um we want everyone to feel comfortable when a YFFR instructor walks in the room. Yeah. It I is mean, so important. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a perfect example of it, that it is an instructor network because when you're vetting it out, you found one of our instructors reached out and we're like, oh, she's pretty legit. And she happens yes. to be training with the same MTU as my husband, like, like you said earlier. So yeah. it is a network and you are part of it. And so we always tell people like, the training at the beginning, the instructor schools are just the beginning of the relationship with why mm -hmm. far, like this is, this is not a 200 hour of good luck. God bless go teach yoga classes or any other certification. Like this is like, this is the beginning of bringing you into, like you said, a, a very strong, powerful network of people across the country and now around the world, which is super cool. So yeah. Awesome that you recognize that. So thank you. Yeah, no, I, that, that was one of the things I'm like, oh, this is really cool when I was hearing all of that. Cause I don't know if I quite realized that. Of course I knew there was branding and I knew there was a name here. You know, I, I, I knew all of that, but I don't think I quite realized um, the structure behind it. And like this, this is kind of cool. Not everyone can do this. Not everyone can do this. Right. And um not to knock the 200 hour, but those, some of those are turn and burns, right? Oh, they're 100%. <laughs> Anybody yeah. can do it. Oh, 100%. You know? And like, yeah. there's, there's been only one 200 hour program. No, I'm sorry. Two, <laughs> two, 200 hour. There she goes again, the balloon yeah. on zoom. People know <laughs> what we're talking about. They've had that experience. Yeah. Um, there are two 200 hours that I've gotten behind. One is the one my personal teacher does in India, Krishna, and one is Trina's. Trina, your squad. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. And they're the only ones that I've ever promoted because mm -hmm. I just feel so uncomfortable with the um the turn and burn that's out there. When I got my two hundred hour, they immediately started selling me on the three hundred hour. And I, I'm so glad that I was smart enough to be like, this is a sacred practice, and you want me to do another. So in a matter of weeks, I'm going to be a 500 hour teacher trainer that hasn't been teaching more than a year. Like, what is that? You guys are crazy. Uh, I yeah. waited 10 years before I got my 500 hour. Yeah. That's when I finally felt I was at the point that I've had enough experience to be able to hold a higher title or level or whatever, you know? So you're absolutely right that that's what it is. And, you know, we're slowing our roll on that. So we get really good, you know, really good quality. And the structure makes, um, it's its own natural filtering system, right? So yeah. folks yeah. who aren't ready to grab the wheel and put in all their effort, that is totally fine. And this program will show that you're not ready for that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so I don't have to be the one to say it. So, you know, there's that. A um, couple of... The, uh, things we are changing for next time, which I started inside your training is integration weeks. We've put so much information into each week hours, the least amount is five hours and the most is 12 hours. And yeah. that's a lot for folks. And I know everyone was getting a little bit worried. They're getting behind. It was so important for me that you really digest the work and not get rush to the finish line. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start adding an integration week after each level. So we have four levels in ISBC, foundations, basic training, advanced operations and tactics, and YFFR out in the world. So yeah. after each um, level, there's going to be an off week. And I think at one point I'm going to give two weeks after maybe uh, advanced ops, maybe um, for people to catch up to integrate, to go back and listen, et cetera. So 
when I reference week six to you right now, it's not going to be week six, quote unquote, moving forward. I guess that's what we would call module six. We'll call it module six instead because we'll just call the other weeks integration week. So um, no matter what we call it, it is the week of um, tax skills training. Mm -hmm. Tell me, and it's funny because tax skills at in-person instructor school is Thursdays. And it's the day when everyone has a huge shift. Grown men cry. Um, Everyone gets it. Everyone comes together. Lives have changed. And I'm, I'm quoting what people have said to me about this. And we've seen it. And that's what they've told us. Okay, so how are we going to mimic this online? I did my best to put in everything we could. For those unfamiliar with our training, the tax skills portion is for civilians to get a taste of the stress of job specific skills and for those on the job to see how they can apply yoga principles to their basic job skills. So everyone does it. Everyone does cop stuff. Everyone does firefighter stuff. Okay. So trying to mimic it online weeks one through five or modules one through five, um, Lots of hubbub on the trainee hub, right? Talk it, talk it, talk it. Week six, everyone goes dark. And I was like, are we okay? Yeah, that's <laughs> I didn't funny. hear anything. And I was like, I either killed them, they quit. Like, so <laughs> I, so tell, I have gotten no feedback on this. And that's the 12 hour week where you're yeah. doing yoga in the face with the face piece, you're doing law enforcement skills. Um, yeah. tell me about that week, unless you blacked it out. No, it, no, <laughs> we didn't black it out. I think that was, um, I thought there was some chatter around that more of the like, wow, it was, it was wow. Because what you did, what we, what we saw at home was we, of course, we all had the cues on how to do the classes as if we were attending them. But when you watch them, um, you know, I think there was people belly crawling around obstacles and over things and stuff. And then you could see their expressions when they were done. And then you could see them like at one point, like in the hallway, trying to get you know, get that regulation back, getting that control back of their breath. Um, It was just more mesmerizing, like, wow, this, this really works. And and somebody was walking around too, right, putting the little, um, that little monitor on the ears and, and showing how it works in person. So we're, we're not able to do that in real life here in our homes. Right. But we we tried a little bit, but watching it, um, you had some good, video and good classes where it it definitely drove it home, Olivia. I thought it was, um, it was well done. Uh, it was definitely a, wow. We saw the fire one. We saw the police one. Um, yeah, that I was trying to remember back on some of those videos. Um, that's where we also had those classes where some of the things that clicked home for me is like, I, I can't remember his name, but the, I think it was the police one where he was, he was doing oh, yoga classes. Yeah. And getting down and getting back up like, Oh my God, that's so important, you know, because yeah. they need to be able to get back up. Right. It's right. Like right. Out and, and all that equipment that they're wearing. Um, I think that was more of a, wow, this is what it is week for everybody. So maybe that's why everybody was a little bit quieter than normal. You know, you're, you're probably right because the profoundness of that day in person, people are quiet. Yeah. You know, they had this profound experience, but they leave for lunch and they're not chattering like they normally are, you know, they're just like, okay. And um, so good. And so we also did the training mask class um did you put on like an n95 and yeah and how did <laughs> that go for N95. you and then I don't like not being able to see right I think what did I have I had a little like a, a mask on and it, it just I think it just really drives it home of what they're mm-hmm. what what our first responders are experiencing yeah yeah I get it uh coming from the fire service we get a lot of comments from the law enforcement community that go through that day specifically like we always used to make fun of y'all, but like putting a mask on, blindfolding ourselves out, restricting our breathing, you just take away so many of the senses like instantaneously. And then you're like, oh shit. And now I have to keep myself under control. Yeah. And so that's where like that, that that's the goal there is that you start to take away those senses. I remember 
actually the very first time I did yoga in a face piece, I was still on the truck job on the truck and it still screwed with my mind. Cause all of a sudden your face piece is all fogged over and you're like, this shouldn't be that hard, but it is. So here we go. Embrace the suck. Yeah. But then, uh, it's become part of my practice actually to put a blindfold on or put that piece on. And I remember actually in our living room during COVID taking my taking my vision away and trying to do yoga without my vision. And then this happened to be a class on YouTube or whatever. And it was in a full balance class, like doing tree poses and doing all kinds of one-legged standard poses and that kind of stuff. I had stuff. no idea that was part what was coming. No. And so that was the wrong class to choose to take away the visit, you know, <laughs> yeah. sight because sight is such a key piece to balance, but you can balance without sight once you start wow. to actually pay attention to it. I'll have to try it. Was it. Yes. So it's fascinating. Yeah. So like, but that's where we, when we start to do that kind of stuff in, in, in person instructor school, and why we tried to mimic it the best we could is when we start to take away those senses, when we start to add stress, that's inherent in our public safety folks, you can see how dysregulated the body, mind, and nervous system comes. And that's the easiest dysregulation they're going to be a part of uh, today. Yeah. And so yeah. it's just, it, it's a, it's a fun, fascinating exercise. So I'm happy to hear that you did try to take away some of the senses. Cause that's the whole goal, right? Is that yeah. just implies that stress response a little bit. Yeah. Here's the thing too, about ISBC and why it really is critical for us to have touch points and sort of clear everyone to move forward is I'm not there with you. Right. So, you know, you just said, I don't like not being able to see a lot of people don't. A lot, you know, a lot of people don't like their breathing restricted, whatever. No one really likes any of that. So maybe they just opt not to wear the mask while they're doing that. I don't know. At in person, you don't get away with that. Yeah. Everyone does it. And if yeah. someone has um, some sort of bad experience, we are there to support them to process that stress so that trauma no longer owns them. Very good. We do not subscribe to, um, listen, we're trauma informed, which all that means is we understand everyone on this earth has a level of trauma that needs to be considered and aware of. But our approach is we process it and we turn it into resilience at a level that that person's ready for, you know, um, not that it is your badge of honor and we will now accommodate you for the rest of your life. Okay. So everyone puts it on. We coach people through, have they had to take their mask off? We tell them a safe way, a safe protocol to do it. So all of that's true, but that's the big difference is that we're standing next to you, pushing you to your 4% challenge. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're doing that or not at home. Yeah. So that's why we do have such critical touch point as we can tell right? We can tell. And that's what I kind of, I think I said it somewhere either in a trainee hub post or even on the course, like guys, and do this with your full heart and your full commitment, because we totally know when you don't, and we're going to have to ask you to answer these questions again, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and that's why I knew I was going to need support. And I thought I was going to quickly grade all this shit, like boop, 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 boop. I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah. No big deal. And one of the first answers I got from someone was like, they clearly didn't even watch the video. Mm. And I, and I looked at Eric and I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh -huh. But then we had people like you that showed such commitment and understanding that I'm like, okay, we just have to make it super clear that this is not one of those click and go courses. So Definitely not. Yeah. Have to set yeah. that expectation straight away. Pe people are going to be grading your work, you know, but anyway, so that is, you know, that's just part of online training that, you know, we just have to accept as a handicap. Yeah. I think um, I remember when you gave, when you, it was very clear that you were like a little disappointed in some of our answers. Right. And I was like, oh no, you know, um, it's, uh, you gave an example of how it should be written. And then how some <laughs> of us I'm like, oh my God, was that me? You know, I was wondering, like, no. I can't remember. Cause at first, cause you know, it's the first time we were answering something and it's like, not quite sure of the, the, you know, the protocol there of how right. to answer it. So I was glad to get the example because I turned, I turned yeah. how I, how I approached my answers from that point on. And then a tip, you mentioned that integration week, um, 
just a quick tip there. What I did, I didn't do it. We had an integration week too, right? Um, I mm -hmm. think there was some there, there was some break in, in our, our class at one point and you call, you called it that right. Integration yeah, week yeah, is that what, yeah. uh -huh. um, to go ahead and, and re-listen to, to videos. I didn't um, start this until almost the end when I was taking tests. I'm like, where did I see that? Or which video did I do it? I started making a glossary um, and I made a glossary of like all the key things, you know, the, the three P's, the C's, you know, all, you know, cause there's so much that comes at yeah. us. Right. And then it's not Sanskrit, but, um, neuroplasticity or whatever, like what, you know, so some of those words too, and some of the science behind of what we're doing are new concepts. We, you know, we had anatomy, we had this, you know, the nervous system, but not to the depth that we have it in here. Um, but anyway, back to my tip, um, I wish I had it. I'll share it with you guys. I started a glossary of like everything. And then I went back page by page on my glossary and wrote which page that was referenced on. So I have a working glossary, but I know your manual is going to change. It's probably very interactive, but happy to share what I did. I, I would yeah, so well, love if you would tool. share that. Yeah. That would yeah. be so helpful. And I know I have a flashback to when I took this college course of the the Sp Spanish history and our textbook didn't have a glossary and I like threw it across the room in yeah. anger because I was like, how am I supposed to study? So now here I am like, and funny enough, we yeah. actually do have a glossary in our in-person instructor manual. And I think we do. We do. But it doesn't, well, no, it's not a glossary. It's a like a dictionary, yeah. basically. Right. It has like yeah. one yeah. of the three P's, but no, it doesn't A glossary reference. would be better, correct. Yeah, it, yeah, it okay. was um, like I have mine here because I print, I'm a paper person, right? Mm -hmm. So I printed all yes. of our weeks and I have them in here and you could tell. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> the you best. see this page with all of the. You <laughs> are the best. This is Eric's but... uh, week. This is the week that he was teaching and he talks so fast. I'm like, wait, uh, what did he say? And I welcome have, like, to arrows. my life. <laughs> yes. Every day I'm like, What? <laughs> Welcome to that class. I was told make it one hour, and I was like, "Holy hell!" Okay, yeah, so right, buckle like, up. Yeah, there's literally like arrows. I'm like, "Wait, I already wrote that," and I was trying to like keep up, and like I had to go back and do it myself because we all learn differently, right? But yeah, so um, I I did a, 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 a glossary. I have everything in here. One so we one here's two eight. things we need to add. There it goes again. We need a glossary. Hope and Peggy, if you can give us that glossary, I will love you forever <laughs> two is we should actually i'll put in somewhere either in the manual or somewhere in the beginning week like that example i did of what i'm not looking for and what i am looking for so people know yeah. right off the bat like yeah uh, you know so okay those are save yourself. yeah <laughs> yeah no and i gave a little like fist bump when you said this is probably the most science intensive course they've taken for a long time yeah because we pride ourselves on that because we get told all the time that yoga is not a tool for public safety because it's a religion or it's this or that yeah, or yeah. so much bullshit that we have to fight against mm -hmm. and so we root ourselves mm -hmm. very deeply in the neuroscience yes and so it is intense like the science behind what we teach is intense because the science behind yoga is actually that intense it's just the fact that modern day science is actually able to measure what the heck is going on in a yoga practice like and we're so fortunate to be living in that time mm -hmm. and so why would we not eat all of that up and share it back out with you guys i mean so i'm proud i mean YFR has been rooted in science for a long time and we get told often that we're complete nerds because we're the people that love this stuff but if you're into the science part like this is a master love master's level science course at some point on the on the neuroscience I, and honestly honestly it is my yeah I'm um my daughter you know during tw during the shutdowns and COVID she had to start her first year at Purdue Lafayette right we're in Indiana um so you know I a, a higher yeah. college. And, um, it was, it, she was doing her first year online. I was looking at that. I'm like, it, it, I don't know the structure of this is, 
exceeded what I, what I saw out of Purdue. I just, I thought the, the, um, the examples given the ease of it and then the, the repeating of it. So if you're not the science-based nerd and I'm not, I clearly started getting the why and why it was important. And then I would take it and put it into my own words. I don't have to say the science words. I could say how your mind and body work together. You know, (laughs) it's like, you know, you know, I could put it in my own words. Um, so I became more comfortable, but I was a little nervous at first. Like, oh my God, this is way more than my anatomy class, you know, on the nervous system, you know, that covered it. But, um, but I think the repetition of it, um, it, you know, by the time I was through week eight, I became very comfortable with it. That's yeah, awesome. That's I, love, great. I love that. We, we made a point of having overlap in each classes where you hear it again and it does apply here and it applies there. And so I'm glad you picked up on that. And, you know, another reason to arm you guys with the why is you don't necessarily have to regurgitate any of it, but you can stand up there teaching with tremendous confidence because you know you have all of this backing you up. And even if someone asks you a question that you, you know, but you can't remember, you can say, you know what, I'm going to have the answer for you next week. I just want to like, make sure I got everything right. Go back, study it, ask one of us, you Mm -hmm. know, when you're, when you become an instructor, you move from the trainee hub to the instructor community page. It's the same thing where we're talking to each other. There's different categories. There's announcements. There's this, there's that. Cheryl's on there all the time. So you can, you know, you can ask that question and whatever. So, you know, you can be confident in teaching. The reason I can go in to a police department and talk to the chief directly with full confidence that if you give me your, you know, your personnel, I will bring them back to you more resilient and I can prove it. You know, Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't have to be afraid anymore. I think we become afraid. And I think that's why 200 hour teachers or trainees have a hard time first teaching at first because they don't have the confidence of is what I'm saying true Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know yeah and so yeah if I may Peggy I've got some of your answers pulled up from different questions I'm not going to put you on the spot and see if you remember the answers (laughs) Let but, me get my glossary. Hold no, on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, re- I'm, I'm going right to I'm gonna, I'm gonna read your answer to you, actually, because if 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 I, if you if I can, because it's perfect, yeah. it's exactly uh-huh. right for this conversation. <laughs> so, uh, the question was, uh, this is more than halfway through the course. Uh, the question is, have you had either of the destructive thoughts come up, and how did you navigate them? You have a beautiful answer, um, and it goes into this. I reminded myself that I can speak with authority while remaining approachable and human, knowing that this audience is 100% skeptical and bullshit detectors helps me rein in my nervousness and present myself in an authentic way that I believe will help with buy-in. Now, you get to say that, that you can step into that because of the base of the knowledge that you just had gone through as to the why, the science behind everything we talk. And so- You answered that question literally the following week. And so it just times in perfectly that while you didn't ha- don't have to say all the big science words, you now know that you can stand there with authority, knowing that this is all literally rooted in the in the science and literature and go in and talk with these folks. So yeah. that 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 answer was just teed up perfectly for that conversation or vice yeah. versa. So for me, it's more authentic to me personally to talk about the why talk about, you know, even in teaching and in some of our practice classes that we had to teach to try to talk about the cueing. I love the only three cues, you know, we're not, you know, you you don't need to to cue every single tendon and muscle, you know, like you don't need to do that. The three cues, perfect uh, lesson there that I didn't get in 200 hour, but um, the way that we approach this just feels more authentic to me. I did not feel like you said, Olivia, like, um, I never felt quite qualified to Mm. teach that. Um, like you said, like the 500 hours, they kind of give it out. It's that turn and burn. I never felt quite qualified to teach in that manner. Right. So, um, this approach feels way more authentic to me. 
And that's, uh, and we have ground rules as one of the parts of the protocol we start with. And we have three sections, right? Trauma-informed ground rules, cultural competency ground rules, and then teacher um, conduct. And the last point of the teacher conduct rules is be authentic. And I say on there, if you're authentic in what you say, what you know, what you're trying to do there, all the other things I listed before this will be there, will fall into yeah. place, you know? So, I mean, I think you, yeah, you hit it. And that's what we're trying to do is get you so well equipped and so qualified that you step into your authenticity. Yeah. And I'm going to, I had another answer queued up. This is <laughs> your, <laughs> this is your, uh, this is your personal reflection. So it is personal. So I do have to sit and ask if I can share your answer or at least parts okay. of it. Yeah. Uh, because again, like this is exactly it. So uh, when I learned during YFR training that we leave all that mystical stuff behind, I was relieved. Uh, hmm. As I began to understand why we leave those things behind, I grew more confident that I could teach this and share what I love best about yoga, the settling of the mind. Perfectly. Yeah. That's exact. Those are your words saying what we say about the, the original intention of yoga. Yeah. Uh, it goes on um, about being culturally informed. And you said that this is very important to you. And that's when it clicked, um, yeah. both as a uh, law enforcement wife and an Army Reserve veteran. Like, hello, we haven't talked about that at all. So we'll have to, we'll have to pull <laughs> I didn't that out know here in a uh, the YFFR approach feels so much more authentic to me. My personal perception has been the biggest change during our training. My confidence has grown. I could never quite see myself teaching in the past. And now I believe I can. Yeah. Having a protocol and ground rules is such a game changer to help me teach confidently and in my own voice. Uh, why this is so powerful is it's because we give you the script. We give you that protocol. We give you those ground rules so you can go and be your best self. Like mm -hmm. by giving you that structure, you get to go and flourish and thrive in a way that you probably were, were not able to before. So, I mean, your answers that you wrote, it's by no accident that you're on the podcast. I'm just saying like, welcome, <laughs> welcome. Yeah. Cause <laughs> you're, you. you're the exact, like, this is exactly what my hope was, you know, those answers. And I've set everything up and hope someone would have that experience. So that is, that's great to hear. So I, I have another question, but let's, let's talk about the army reserves. Oh, so, I was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> like I was a baby that I was like right out of high school. Um, it was, I, I was still in high school. I was between my, my, um, my junior and senior year of high school when I went to boot camp, right? And then after I graduated high school, I did the the next part of the training and I did it for eight years. So wow. I, I feel like it was like another life ago, but I was I was a baby. But um I think some of the approach here uh felt normal to me because I mm. had been through some of that kind of training, structure, right? Structure, yeah. Yeah, structure for sure. Yeah. What was your favorite part about being in the reserves? Um, I love, I love the training. Um, I had, um, where did I go? I went to Indianapolis, um, right outside of Indianapolis for my training and then, uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey for uh, boot camp. It's, that's how long ago I feel like it's been so long. Um, I like the structure of being in the military. And it was also a very proud thing to do. I thought, honestly, I thought everybody did that. <laughs> The everybody because I, I came from kind of a military my father my sister everybody was you know did their time or did that I thought everybody was supposed to do that plus all the benefits that they give you for college classes and things like that but I'd say it was the uh, the people I met being part of something big and uh, being able to serve yeah sure. you know we've had our program we have a military program um, and we work with the Army Reserves and the Air Force Reserves. Um, so that's part of what that. we do too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did not know that. I know that I know that this started with, you know, approaching veterans. I, I want to say that's where you started. That right? was where I, yeah, I personally started veterans and some active military. But then, you know, it was just went into first responders. And mm -hmm. but then, um people who worked with the Iowa army reserves, uh, approached us who knew my work, knew what we did approached us. So we, you know, tailored it more towards military culture. We didn't have to change it much. That's the thing is 
you yeah. know, we at first we were trying to really, really change it to be military specific. But honestly, if we, when we just gave, like the first time we did it, where we just gave the wife of our training with pictures of cops and firefighters and been like, change it to, you know, what yeah. you see every day. So everyone just, got yeah. it brilliantly, yeah. you know, so it was, so it was great. So, um, oh, yeah. So phenomenal. We, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Um, okay. So when you join the instructor network, wh- where, what's the first thing you, you just got certified? What are you going to do next? Um, you have to say go to <laughs> Disneyland, but no, what, so what's the, what's the first thing you're going to do? Where do you want to take this? Where do you want to do your practice classes? Like what, what do you foresee yourself using this for? Yeah. I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, I live I live in Northwest Indiana. My husband works in Illinois. I certainly have contacts and friends all over. Um, oh, I haven't done my ride along yet. Do you, I have not done my ride along. I absolutely can work through his department and do that, but I want to do it on my own. Right. So I'm going to approach our local department here and try to get a ride along here. Um, or do it with fire know. since you have so much law enforcement knowledge. Yeah. Try fire. Yes. Fire's yes. more fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll um, tell you what I did. I have done tons of ride alongs and whenever, and usually nothing quote unquote cool happens. Right. But the one thing where we got to make it a rest, the rest of my ride along was sitting while she did her paperwork, her paperwork. Yeah. yeah. You know, but with, when I was at the fire department, we got to, we made food, we made, oh, what was it called? Don't, don't perpetuate the rivers. <laughs> yeah. When I wrote to the we fire department, to all nap. we did was eat and we it was food. Crazy, right? <laughs> we got to watch TV. Just no, but like cake. we were <laughs> eating dinner yeah. and then we went, we went on a call and then we went on another call from that. All of a sudden we're out till midnight and they were like, do you want us to like drop you off at your hotel or do you want to come back and like stay the whole night? And like, and I was like, no, yeah. I better go back. And so. So of course the people at the hotel are wondering why this like fire truck is dropping me off. Yeah, like, yeah, drop you off. Like, you know, like, <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. um, yeah, so I've had that's a hysterical. lot of fun at fire departments. And I it actually um just this past week I reached out to my girlfriend. Um her son just joined the fire department here in town. And I said, Hey, do you think, you know, I, I don't know if I say his name, I, do you think Jacob would be willing for me to do a practice class with him and some of his new trainees. I just saw there's like five new ones that, you know, that had joined the department and she's like, Oh, absolutely. And then she said, you know, Peggy, I I can hook you up with the chief. I can give you an introduction there. He's very open. She's like, he's very open to all the new things. He's got therapy dogs and he's got all that. We always get lumped in with that. Yeah, (laughs) I know. (laughs) So there you you know what I do? Just be like, thank you. Great. Give me his number. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I can help explain it, but I think I am going to approach that, um, our oh, local fire department totally. and then also yeah. a little bit farther in Indiana, um, I was talking to Cheryl about this. There's this whole training center. Um, oh, I, I think I brought that up. There's a whole training center, just a few miles from here that I was not quite aware of. They cover everything, police training, fire plant training, um, emergency services, it's a, it's a whole collaboration. I'm going to take my uh, CPR training there. So oh, I that's right. You did. Tell yes. People. That's a yeah. great idea. Great yeah. time to strike up conversations. Yeah. And remember anything in Illinois with law enforcement, we are accredited. So don't forget to pitch that part of it. And also with your girlfriend's son, you know, uh, you could say like, listen, if all these new hires, do like make a point to do yoga with you, they can report to their superiors that, Hey, on our own, we're taking our own mental health into consideration, you know, Mm -hmm. and here's the study that shows the five of us will not be getting PTSD on this job. And we're doing this on our own, by the way, like on our own time on our, what, you know, whatever. I mean, that's a great way to start, you know, I don't know, making a name for themselves. Yeah, I think I have a lot of avenues I've been trying to, to look at and, and what's around here. There's there our um, area here in Indiana, um, big on training. I see them right down the street at the park doing like the drone training. You know, that, that's a new thing, right? Everyone's learning how to mm-hmm. how to use drones and stuff. Right. But um, I mean, they're big on training. So I, I think it would be well received. Well, this is awesome. I cannot wait to see and hear (laughs) and, you know, 
everything that you do and you've been um, a joy to work with, even as at a distance, I was, you know, I was very nervous to, to do ISBC, to put our instructor school online. But when I see folks like you and a, a lot of others, I know we talked about, you know, one person quitting and one person, you know, Yeah, whatever, but that's going to happen. Yeah. it's, it's, that is the, the few, you know, like Yes. there are so many people, including you that have really dove into this and it just, I don't know, it makes my heart swell. And I'm very, very humbled that we have people like you on our team and part of our instructor network. So I just want to thank you for not only working hard, but also um, being here to, to talk about it with us. It's, it's, No, I haven't thank talked you. to you like this face to face. So this is awesome. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I was thrilled to be asked um, and to share my experience. I think it was top notch and anyone should absolutely think about doing it. Um, I wanted to attend it in person and there just wasn't one you know, around, um, around here coming up anytime soon. So then when I saw that this was going to be launching, I put my name in there right away. Yes, I went on the waiting list. Wait, yes, I went on it. Hey, when is it starting? I kept looking and looking and I somehow missed that, that first roll call, right? Where um, you had asked uh, some people to, to join in early to be part of the feedback team, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I missed that one, but um, I don't know how I missed it, but I was very excited when this went, when registration opened and I was able to participate. Well, and And listen, you're right. go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, when when you mentioned the Illinois and it being accredited, that was one one question I had asked of um, I think I put that question out there, maybe squad leader. I can't remember where I where I filtered it, but that was one of my questions because you know, um, it, all across the country, we have, you know, <laughs> some struggles here with training and mandates that have come on and um, wellness is one of them that in Illinois, where they have to have certain hours of training. And I wasn't sure if we were accredited to offer it there, if that would be like considered one of their wellness programs. Yes, we are. And, you know, that's, that's getting more and more common now wellness hours, some specifically name yoga um, as part of it. And we have been used when in states we are accredited in and states that we're not and states that we're not, it's not because we tried and they said no, it's because our bandwidth of the amount of effort it takes to go through every single state, it's like insane, right? So Yeah. we did the ones that there was an ask already and, you know, they kind of helped us through it. So the people have used us even, and for those hours, even if we're not officially like post accredited or whatever, you can still use us for those hours. So Perfect. I don't want anyone in other States thinking that they can't, they can't, it's definitely been done. Um, and if you have any questions, if anyone's listening, has questions about that or, has the in with post in their state and wants to, you know, get it through. So info at yoga for first responders.org all spelled out. So we can, we can talk about it. Um, I forgot what I was going to say before, but it was probably something great about you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I interrupted because that no, was no, in no, my no, line. Like, oh, no, no, yeah. no. That's probably more important anyway. Um, well, yeah, I don't want to keep you any longer, but I appreciate it. I can't wait to see what you do, like I said. And um, yeah, if anyone's thinking about doing this, it's a lot of hours, but what would you say, like, how did you uh, schedule those hours? What was the best way for you to get your work in? Oh, um, it was easy to do, right? Once you, you make... Once we got the feel of it, right, the feel of the rhythm of, of like the classes, video and then reading, answering the questions I just schedule time every day. And I think we even covered that in one of our um, our modules of personal excellence, right, is how do we approach this and how do we make sure we are on target with our, our training? Um, I think I did like in the mornings, I did some in the mornings and then in the evenings as well, because I, I do have a day job, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, Um, right. so, um, it, it wasn't hard at all to fit it in. What's your day job, Peggy? I work in insurance. How, how exciting is that? <laughs> Yeah. Fun. <laughs> yes.
<laughs> well, very cool. No, that's good. Cause that is a lot, you know, that people have been asking. So yeah, in the morning and the, and those are the best two times to study. I don't know if you know that, but if you study first thing in the morning or right before you go to sleep, your brain can digest. And when you first wake up, you're in that kind of alpha theta state of absorption before you actually turn on the prefrontal cortex and you're in the real world, you know? So Yeah. those are two great times to study just in general, whether you are in middle school or you are doing ISBC, those are two great times to study. Oh, that's Yeah. good to know. I know we had that exercise where, uh, what would we call it? A brain dump, right? When we wake up Oh in the yeah. morning, we wrote just what, just write for like 10 minutes or three pages or something like that. And then you do your 10 minute practice. And that, I think that really helps set the tone. And Oh, I have 100%. found for sure uh, doing that exercise, it's opening your, yourself up, um, to be outside of the box, right? To think outside of the box. So I, I thought that was a pretty cool exercise to do. So keep that one in there. Mm It's been in there from day one. -hmm. A lot of people wanted to cut a lot of my, what we used to call self-care. And that one I was, well, so we did cut it for like a year because I put someone else in charge of personal excellence. And then when I took that person out of that role, I was like, we're bringing morning pages back. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to, Olivia was kind of teasing into this question. I'm going to drive it all the way home. So random strangers on the Instagrams, they see our latest ad for the next cohort for 002 for ISBC and they're on the fence. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? You just went through it. What Mm -hmm. do Oh, just you, what do you, ask. what do you tell Yeah. them? Oh, definitely do it. And if you are on the fence, look at the instructors, reach out like I did. I felt um, after talking to some of the instructors through email, very willing to share their own experience so that it felt, I felt more comfortable in, in committing to the, the training. Um, It's absolutely worth it. They, you know, some of it, it it's intense, um, but it is at your own pace and you can get through it. And I think that um, being part of this, if that's your calling and your help, I mean, yoga for first responders obviously is, is uh, something that would be near and dear to your part, your heart. If you are Googling this or looking this up or considering it, then absolutely do it. Thank you for that. Cause yeah, like, like you said, if you're called to this and you want to do it, may I be so bold to say, this is how you can live that dream. This is how you can do it and be successful, you know? So thanks for seeing that. And what Peggy's referring to is finding the instructors near her. We have an instructor finder map or instructor network map on our website, Um, so this is for agencies too. So we get a lot of emails like, do you have an instructor in our area or this or that? You can look, you can look on the map and see what the closest instructor is. If it does not look like we have an instructor in your area, A, check out our upcoming instructor schools and see if you can send someone. But also we have tons of online, um, online in-service training, online courses um, that aren't uh instructor school specific, you know, just for your knowledge, we have our training apps, we have lots of online options too. But yeah, so you can go on the website and look at that map. Well, very cool. Thank you for taking the time. I know it's late at night on your end. So thank you for doing this at this hour. Eric, do you want to say anything to sign us off? Mm -hmm. um with the radio voice to sign us off i'm gonna say peggy it's been a pleasure to get to know you uh i appreciated the attention to detail you had today over coordinating wardrobes you can see that olivia and i did not Do you want to see what my shirt in says? the in, in the jacket but So embarrassing. <laughs> namaste Namaste. home and drink wine <laughs> nice. because we're all sick we don't even have our typical cocktails No, in our hands normally like we're, I would be we're... having a cocktail right now, but I, as you can hear, I'm stuffed up. Too funny. But, but, but honestly, it's been a super pleasure to get to know you because uh, I have not had a whole lot of interaction with ISBC other than those couple of weeks that I had taught. Uh, but I'm so excited to hear your journey and how you've been able to step fully into your authentic self through this training and feel that value and wanted to share that with others by coming on the show. So thank you for opening up, being vulnerable with us. And until next time.
Yes. Thank you so much. We'll see See you you on the Instructor Network. Hey, before we go, I want to remind you that training your mental and physical health is incredibly important, especially for those working in high stress jobs like first responders. And if you're interested in learning more about yoga for first responders, visit yogaforfirstresponders.org for our on-demand training app, online course platform, in-person training, and more. Like this podcast, subscribe, and give us a great review. We are so happy to have you part of the YFFR mission.